Light leaks and lens flares. Oh my. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNace or you can find me here at Flurn this many days a week because I make videos helping you guys get better at Photoshop, photography, and life. And today we're doing something really cool. We're kind of doing like a, a mock Instagram effect. We're gonna be adding light leaks and lens flares and just all kinds of really cool things to make this image even more awesomer. That's a word now. Um, this is a picture of our buddy Sam Luna who is probably the coolest person I know in the world. Um, the suspenders and the PBR probably give that away. Um, but he's a really cool dude so I wanted to make a cool picture of his. Um, the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna try to bring back some information um, from our highlights. Let's just drag this down here. Um, I've done this in the last two episodes actually and it's just this technique that I just recently discovered so I just wanna do it all the time now. Cause you know, you probably do that too. Like, do you ever discover some technique and you're like, I gotta do it all the time. Um, if you do, tell me what it is. Like, what's the last technique that like you have to do all the time now? <laughs> I go through that too, I go through phases. Um, but basically, you see this like blown out area. We don't have to deal with that. You can grab a curves adjustment layer. You can click and drag this curves down. You can see it's getting information for the most part. If you do have light areas like that, that there's just really not any information in, um, what you want to do then is you can go to like your blue channel and you can click and drag down and you can see instead of turning it white it's actually turning it like a little bit yellow and I want a little bit of red in there too so we're going to go to the green channel the opposite of green is magenta so it's actually putting a little bit of magenta in there too okay so this is you know given like all that blown out information and things like that this is actually just going to color it a little bit so now all you have to do, this is super easy and that's why I think it's awesome and I think everyone's gonna benefit from it. You can just go to your layer mask and go to image and then here to apply image. There we go and you just hit okay. You just leave everything like this. This is the default settings and you hit okay. There we go. And I'm just gonna lower the opacity here because I don't need so much color. But now it at least looks like, you know, we've got back some of the detail from the original. So that's pretty cool there. Okay, so that's how we're gonna start this one off. Um, I do wanna do like light leaks and things like that, but first I do want to, um, we're gonna color this image. It's kinda like a manual Instagram effect that we're gonna be doing today. So to color this, I'm just gonna choose a random color like this. It, it really doesn't matter actually what color you choose. You can always change it. And I'm gonna hold down Alt Option and hit Delete, which is gonna fill with its color. Now we're gonna go to change this layer blend mode from normal, I'm gonna change this to lighten which is kind of cool because it just, you know, anything that's darker than this shows up and um, like it, it just turns to this color basically. So again, this isn't the color you have to choose. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit Command U and that's gonna bring up my hue saturation. And now I can just change the hue to whatever I want. Like, yeah, that looks pretty good. Change our lightness, you know, bring that down, change our saturation and um, yeah, there we go, something like that. I like it got a lot more um, and I wouldn't have found this color naturally anyway. So now I'll just bring the luminosity down and we're getting, you know, like instantly we get like a little bit more of the vintage effect, which is cool. I'm going to do the same thing kind of like the other way around. I'm going to grab this color here and fill it. And instead of changing this to darken, I'm going to change this to lighten. And now we're going to do the reverse. So this one, sorry, that one was set to lighten. This one will set to darken. There we go. And I'm just gonna, I like this color already, so I'm just gonna bring that uh, opacity down on that one a little bit more. So you can see already, like we're definitely getting more of that Instagram kind of like cool fake uh, look like this. Okay, now I'm gonna do some stuff with curves as well. So I'm gonna go to my curves adjustment layer and uh, we're just gonna play with the colors and curves. We don't even need to play with the RGB here. Let's go to our red channel. You grab this little hand tool and then you can just like click in areas and kind of like drag them around. And this is fun. Um, like if you want less red in your highlights, just pull less red in your highlights, maybe a little bit more red in your shadows. And um, you can see it's creating like a manual. I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. It's doing this to your actual curves. Like it's creating points and things like that. Um, but all you have to do is like click here and drag around, which is cool. All right, your blue channel. It's like, you know, maybe I want more blues in my highlights, maybe a little bit less in my shadows. So you can just play around here and um, get a, a lot of really cool effects. All right, so I like that. It's just kind of like coloring it even more. And um, now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take this again. I'm gonna do another one, but this time, instead of just applying it across the entire layer, like, you know, just, I don't want it to be visible everywhere. I'm in an extra one, but we'll probably use it anyway. Um, let's just, I'm gonna start off by just doing something really weird with my curves, like, you know, cl clicking on my blue and dragging it way down. Um, and then I'm just gonna grab my, 
uh, gradient tool here and choose a radial gradient, sorry, a linear gradient from black to, you can just click up here and go to foreground to transparent, which is this guy right there. And then we're just gonna go from black to white. And I'm just gonna drag that out and then like, invert it or something. There we go. This, uh, looking back at everything that I told you to do, that was probably not the quickest way to get you there. Um, but it's basically, we have a gradient in our layer mask and this curve is just, you know, that's just gonna color it like that. Um, so now what you can do is, you know, you can add like some blues or, you know, take away some yellows or something like that from that area. So it's just a really cool way to kind of get more lighting effects and things like that in your image. And if you want to, you know, you can like pay, paint it around the corners and, you know, stuff like that. You know, however you want to do this, it's totally up to you. It's your cool effect. And the nice thing about this is, um, you know, I do like Instagram. I think it's a lot of fun. And a lot of people said that they really liked it too. Um, but this is just, it gives you like a little bit more control than Instagram would over, over your particular image. All right, let's do, we're gonna do some more of these. Um, I'm gonna grab another adjustment layer. Actually, this time, you know what? Let's put a lens flare in, because I just want to, and I think it would be fun. So that's that's that. Um, what we're gonna do is, I got a quick tip for you guys. If you are making a lens flare, um, you should always try to make your lens flare in an area that actually has light. Um, so for instance, you wouldn't want to have your red lens flare originate there or there. You'd want a lens flare originating there or there, and. I can see that the light is coming from this direction um, because Sam's face is lit from that direction. So if I wanted to do this and make it somewhat accurate, I would put the lens flare back there. So, you know, kind of figure out where the light actually would be coming from and uh, mimic that. So to do this, it's actually really cool. You just hit shift delete and you can fill this with black. There we go, filled with black. I'm gonna go to filter and I'm gonna go down to render and down to lens flare. Now there's a reason why I filled it with black. I'm gonna put this guy right there. So again, you, I'll just zoom in for you guys to see how this works. You just basically click where you want this lens flare to go. So, you know, we said we wanted it somewhere around there. We'll just put it somewhere around there. There we go. And you know, however bright you want this to be and hit okay. So it's gonna put your lens flare right there. Now the coolest thing about this is you can just change this from normal to screen now. And uh, now I have a lot of control over this lens flare because I can move it around, like I can, you know, scale it and things like that. And um, it's not really limited to like, you know, normally it just gets pasted on the layer like exactly how it was, but now it's it's a bit better. It's on its own layer and uh, that helps out quite a bit. All right, I'm gonna move this down low and I'm gonna show you guys what happens when I do. Um, this layer, if you guys remember, darkens up the lights and the lens flare, was a lot lighter see that it's like showing up as white it's in the wrong color range so if you do you know drastic color changes and things like that you'll want to make sure that you don't um you don't put effects over top of that put your effects like a lens flare underneath all right i'm going to give this a little bit of a blur the lens flare itself um you know because that's just it's too clear there like i don't think you would really see that as clearly all right, let's give that a little bit more of a blur because I can't even see that that did anything. There we go. Cool, that looks good. Um, on top of that, let's just make another layer. I'm just jumping around here because this is kind of how I would edit it, just kind of having fun. Um, along with that lens filler, I wanted some more color in here, so I'm just gonna grab like a pink color, whatever, and just paint here. It doesn't matter. You can always hit Command U and change your color. And uh, I'm gonna change this from normal down to color dodge. All right, or maybe color burn. I don't know. Yeah, let's do color burn. And then, no, I don't know. Yeah, we'll do color burn. <laughs> I'm gonna hit command U. It, it kinda depends on how light or dark your color is, whether or not this is gonna look how you want it to. But I think color burn is good. And then we'll just you know bring that in and kinda lower the saturation. There we go. And then I'm gonna put a layer mask on there. So, you know, I didn't choose the right color to start with because I didn't really know what it was. But I think, you know, in the end it looks good and that's, really all that's important. So it just puts a little bit more color in there. So there's an effect. All right, now we're gonna do a little bit more with our curves and then we're gonna do some stuff with light leak. So I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer. Um, sorry, well, let's just do levels this time because I like that. We're gonna change our darks and our lights again. So I'm gonna go to my blue channel, pull in my lights a little bit, and I'm gonna pull in some of this stuff in the darks, adding some blues into the shadows. And now we're gonna put some reds into the shadows as well. There we go, we've got kind of a, a light leak, or you know, some of that, like there's a lot of blue going on. 
that's not a light leak. I, I used the wrong word there. But we do have some blue going on, which is cool. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a hue adjustment layer. And I'm going to go to our hue saturation. Okay, and I'm going to hit this colorize button. And now I'm just going to change this to a color that I, I want generally the entire image to look about like this color. So there we go. Um, this is going to colorize my entire image. And then like all I have to do is just kind of like lower this opacity and it's going to bring everything back into like the same color gamut. So, you know, we, we have a lot of pretty crazy colors going on in this image, but doing this kind of like unites everything back together once more. All right. Underneath uh, some of this stuff, I'm going to grab a layer. Let's just grab a brush tool. Why not? I, I like making, you know, things like light leaks and stuff. I like just using the brush tool because why not? It's fun. Um, so there we go. Painting with a brush tool, something like that. You can lower the opacity and, oh, I'm getting stuck on my opacity. There we go. Lower the opacity and then maybe we'll do the same thing for here. So grab a color like this, paint in a little bit like that and then, you know, maybe paint a little bit over here as well. And, you know, it, it really does just look like, you know, kind of a random effect because it is, you know, it, it essentially is. You're just randomly painting around with colors and, um, you know, it, it fits this type of image, which is perfect. All right. I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to go. We're almost done with this. I'm just, you know, just kind of having fun, really, because that's what uh, that's what it's all about. All right. We're going to grab that guy and then I'm going to make a black layer mask on that. Just hit command I to do that and um, paint this going in the opposite direction so we have, um, you know, it gets darker in the area away from the sun and lighter where the sun is. All right, this looks pretty good. Um, we're almost there. I'm just gonna grab a hue saturation. It's a little bit too red, not enough like yellowy for me. Um, so I'm just gonna grab this hue. You can just use like your up and down arrows and I'm just gonna, kinda doing like a hue shift for the entire image. There we go. And that looks a bit better to me. So um, yeah, there we have it, guys. This is just light leaks and you know all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, we didn't wind up using that. From this, you could put textures. You could do whatever you want. We have an awesome texture library at Flurn. You can we'll link to that below where you can find all kinds of things that you could put over top of this. But um, this is some great steps on getting you like colorized how you actually might want to color an image. So let's show you guys the before and after. Hold down Alter Option and uh, we'll just click on the before. It's a great image. It looks, you know, just like a, a, a photograph because uh, <laughs> it is one. It looks like, you know, a straight out of the camera. And then, uh, you know, doing some cool stuff like this gives it kind of like that vintage light leak effect, which uh, I like a lot. And I think um, I think you guys will like it, too. Thanks so much for watching, Flurn. That's it. I'm out. I'm flying to North Carolina today to go to my brother's wedding. And we're going to set up a photo booth. So we'll come back with some fun pictures from that. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flurn you later.